I always struggled with a sense of self-worth, and I escaped often into drugs. My drug usage was on again, off again, but they were never things that I considered chains that bound me until the day I took my first hit off of a crack cocaine pipe. This was just three days after my last child, my first daughter Kate, was born. But it is not a lie when they say that you can become addicted off the first hit of a crack cocaine pipe. I was instantly, immediately. I felt ecstatic, energized. I was enlightened. I was euphoric. And this was not a feeling I was willing to lose. Crack cocaine became my god, and it was the only thing I had my eyes set on. At the same time I was consumed by my drug addiction, I was raising three children. Somehow I managed to cook for them and clean for them, do their laundries, provide for them, but I neither loved them nor cared for them the way that God had intended. I allowed my drug addiction to steal me from my children and precious memories that might have been, especially in my daughter's first full year of life, are forever lost in a haze of pipe smoke. My oldest son, Jeremy, was in kindergarten at the time. He attended half-day school, and we would go out and wait for him. The school was in eyesight of our home, so with the help of a crossing guard, Jeremy walked to where I was standing and waiting for him with his little brother at my side and his baby sister on my hip. We went into the house and I got them settled down for their naps. And then my son, who was standing in the kitchen, says to me, Mom, I'm hungry. And out of my mouth came, I don't give a crap if you're hungry. But I didn't use the word crap. No, it was the full-on expletive, and the Lord was not pleased. The only explanation I have for what happened next is that I received a spiritual slap across the face. Time was non-existent between God's rebuke and my knees hitting the floor, falling before my son and hugging him and sobbing in sorrow, apologizing and begging him. Please forgive me, I'm so sorry. And of course he forgave me, uh, just as I knew that God had. I felt his love as surely as I felt Jeremy's when he put his arms around me and said, that's okay, mommy, I love you. So I dried my tears and I prepared my son's lunch with care. We sat at the table and I set my eyes on him not even for remembering the last time we had done that. Jeremy was happily sharing his day with me, gobbling down his lunch, and completely oblivious to the life change that had just happened in his mom. I put Jeremy down for his nap, and I called my parents in Tennessee, 2,300 miles away, and I confessed my drug addiction. And I told them I needed help. And my parents, they just listened in silence to everything that I had to share, and it was so much, so much. Um, And their only response was, we'll be there in three days. When my parents drove up at 5.30 in the morning, three days later as promised, and with my ex passed out on the couch, we silently loaded up first the kids, then their clothes, and all the toys and games and books that we could stuff into the trunk of my parents' Oldsmobile. And we drove off, not into the sunset, but into a new day that God was just bringing into existence. Through God's grace, my son Jeremy has no memory of that day, but in our family, we talk about it often because I never want to forget that God's timing is perfect. It was exactly one year to the day 
that I became bound in my drug addiction, that God broke the chains and set me free. And I wouldn't wish these things on anybody. But honestly, I couldn't go back and say, I wish they wouldn't have happened because I wouldn't be connected to the God that I'm connected to today.